I'd like to call to order the April 3rd uh, yeah, Committee of the Hold meeting for the Pottstown Council. Would you rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. From our subcommittee's uh, emergency services, Chief Hand, anything to add? Very good. Infrastructure, Councilor Lebedinsky. Uh, it's in your packet. Okay. And while I have you, the efficient methods, would you add yeah, to that? I do. We have uh, the last month's meeting. Um, real quick, it was uh, basically uh, water and electrical uh, will soon have uh, sensors uh, replaced on them that have instantaneous feedback for monitoring usage. And um, we're going to automate the LNI scheduling soon. So that was really about it this time. Okay. From transportation, Councillor Proskel. No meeting. How about um, the ordinance review? Okay. Economic development, Ms. Lee Clark. Good evening, Councillors, Madam Mayor. Um, so the most exciting thing I have to share is that through the generosity of Univest, PAID was able to offer uh, micro grants to small businesses. There were 14 that applied. We were able to award nine. There will be a check presentation by Univest um, and PAID um, this Friday. And so uh, these were the awardees, Grumpy Sandwiches, DJ Nails, Once Upon a Time, High Street Music, Juan Carlos, Welcome to the Avenue, Three Daughters in, Laurel and Lace, and Philadelphia Granite. Uh, they all were awarded $500. Uh, this was done by an independent review panel. They were volunteers that agreed to work with PAID, um, and the information was redacted only the pertinent information to make the decision. So these were the recommendation of the independent review panel. Uh, we do have another grant round coming because we have another funder that has agreed to do the same thing that Univest did. So we will be able to award more grants. Uh, I can't disclose the funder at this time, but we will be releasing that information very soon. Those that did not make it, um, one especially was on the bubble. Uh, we are interested in seeing that they hopefully get funded next round. Uh, the people that have been awarded in this round will not be eligible to reapply. The planters, I hope you have been watching. Um, they are very nice. I want to commend Brett Treat and Danette Wilson, who literally have been out there with jugs of water watering the plants. Um, this week it hasn't been necessary, but prior to that, to keep them alive. So uh, that goes in other duties as assigned in their job description, which was never part of the bargain, and they have um, joyfully done it. So I wanted to recognize them keeping the Walmart flowers alive. Uh, Gazzo Steaks, I uh, got notification from Pico that their work will be uh, hopefully started on Friday, this Friday, and completed on this Friday, and soon after you should be looking for an opening date. Gazos has been very prolific on Facebook, so I think you'll know uh, when they're opening. Uh, traffic should be interesting that day. I'll watch it all from my office window. Um, also, the grooming room has moved. Um, I do not know whether she is open, but she is in the old Beverly's Pastry Cake Studio space. And our gala is Tri-County Area Chamber is holding a ribbon cutting on Friday at 11 a.m. for those of you that would like to stop by and offer congratulations. 
Miss Pickles is open, fantastic sandwiches, and uh, I think that is pretty much it. Um, 2023's annual report of paid is out. It is out on our website. If you just can't wait, I'm hoping by Monday night, counselors, I will have a hard copy for you. It is entitled The Collective, which yes, we know there is a business coming to town called The Collective. I think somebody said great minds think alike. Uh, so obviously it takes a lot of people to continue to move the borough forward. Um, there, are, there was a small typo in our hard copies, so hopefully I will have these in your hands on Monday evening when the correction. And that is my report for economic development, and in the interest of time, there really was no great action in land banks, so we can move on. Oh, great. Thank you. So much for land bank, uh, human relations. Ms. Levingood. Good evening, Councilors, Council President, and Madam, Madam Mayor. Uh, basically, just want to report that the next Human Relations uh, Commission meeting will be held on Tuesday, April the 9th um, at 6 p.m. in Council Chambers, and all are welcome to attend. Okay. Uh, Rick at Center. Joe here? You on? Anything to add? Um, basically the same as last month but there is a couple of things i want to point out um the um uh april 18th there'll be a health fair uh offering free health screenings from 10 a.m to noon um and uh for for more information call 610-367-2313 extension one and april 19th uh there will be a blood drive Sponsored by the NAACP, uh, 12 noon to 5 p.m. Very good. Thank you, sir. Uh, from the Pottstown School District, Councilor Lindsay, mm -hmm. anything? No, I have nothing. Okay. Uh, we will be skipping, in the interest of time, we're going to skip the solicitor's general discussion. So, do we have a short mayor's report? <laughs> <laughs> I was on a ride along today, and Lisa made me put the events, which are not inclusive, in your packet. Um, any feedback would be greatly appreciated. There are some things missing on here, and I just noticed that um, Pow Wow May 4th and 5th is not on here. That is 12 to 5 um, at Riverfront Park. Um, and also 420 from 10 to 2 is the Montgomery County PTK cleanup. Um, sorry, the community college PTK cleanup and also the borough encampment cleanup led by the deviators. Um, and did a lot this this month. I'll be very brief. We did an enormous cleanup. Um, thanks to the deviators and all partners that came out. Uh, we cleaned out a lot from abandoned borough encampments. Um, and we met with the um, new commissioner. <laughs> to bellow um, regarding a solution for um, the unhouse. And the rest is in your packet, and then I want to, is that quick enough for you? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We, awesome. we have a, a lot of presentations. I know, that's fine. Do you want me to go up there or just here, from here? Whatever you want, yeah. Just want to make sure you're going to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought no, you said you weren't doing I'm it. getting yeah. beat up. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Oh, go right ahead. Sorry about that. And um, now I would like to present the 2024 National Library Week Proclamation. Whereas libraries offer the opportunity for everyone to connect with others, learn new skills, and pursue their passions, no matter where they are on life's journey. Whereas libraries have long served as trusted institutions, often the heart of their cities, towns, schools, and academic campuses. Whereas libraries are an essential public good and fundamental institutions in democratic societies working to improve society, protect the right to education and literacy, and promote the free exchange of information and ideas for all. Whereas the PA Forward Literacy is Power initiative highlights how libraries and staffs encourage literacy in basic, informative, civic, and social, health, and financial areas which contributes to greater personal and community success. Whereas libraries adapt to the ever-changing needs of their communities, 
developing and expanding collections, programs, and services that are as diverse as the populations that they serve. Whereas library workers have worked to expand fluency in the digital literacy skills needed to navigate the online world, which the 21st century information exists. Whereas libraries are accessible and inclusive places that promote a sense of local connection, advancing civic engagement and shared community goals. Whereas getting a library card is a financial, financially literate action. Whereas libraries play a pivotal role in economic development by providing resources and support for job seekers, entrepreneurs, and small businesses, thus contributing to the local prosperity and growth. Whereas libraries, librarians, and library workers are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. Um, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor Stephanie Henrick, proclaim National Library Week April 7th through the 13th, 2024. During this week, I encourage all citizens to visit their local library, which is the Pottstown Regional Public Library, and celebrate the adventures and opportunities they unlock for us every day. Ready, set, library. Wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love our library. And Mr. Keller, your manager's report. Yes, uh, thank you and good evening, everyone. I'll try to keep mine fairly brief tonight. I just have you, one main item to update you all on, and it's in regards to the uh, former borough garage located at 657 Beach Street, which we've been um, receiving um, some development interest in uh, lately from multiple uh, entities looking to uh, do residential or potentially repurposing the existing building. Um, a little bit of background on this building. The facility has been active for over a decade, um, yet the borough still continues to allocate funds for its general upkeep. And, um, you know, we've, we've really haven't had a lot of interest in the building um, in the past because there are some level of low levels of um, uh, soil issues as well as an aging underground stormwater culvert. And that's kind of deterred some of the potential investors in the past. Um, moreover, it's tax exempt status. It doesn't contribute any revenue to the borough or the school district. And um, given these circumstances, it's evident that the property has become a liability rather than an asset to our community. Therefore, um, we're proposing that council direct this matter to the infrastructure committee for a recommendation on how to move forward. And um, uh, we believe this committee could help explore possibilities uh, for council to consider for conveying the property in a manner that um, serves the community's best interest. Very good. Anything so, else? Um, yeah, so if, uh, if, if there's any questions or any input or suggestions that anyone has um, about this or what the process might could look like, please reach out to me individually. Um, otherwise... Uh, We'd ask you to send it to infrastructure to take a closer look at. Good. And that's all that I have. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we're at 11, zoning application for 415 High Street. Mr. Garner? It's a presentation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wien. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is uh, kind of a redo, if you will. Uh, Mr. Murphy here. Uh, wants to spend some more time with us this evening. In uh, late January, we received a zoning application for this property at 415 High Street. It previously was the Wells Fargo Bank. I think you're all familiar with it. Um, the applicant wants to turn the first floor into a laundromat with apartments on the second floor. It would require zoning relief. Uh, when council looked at this in February, uh, you uh, opposed the proposed use and authorized uh, our office to send a letter in opposition to the zoning relief. The zoning hearing never occurred. Mr. Murray asked for a continuance and he is here tonight to give you some more information about the uh, proposed use. Mr. Murray, I'll hand it over to you. All right, very good. <laughs> Should be on. Okay, very good. Yes, yeah, so I'm here this evening. Uh, we did file the zoning hearing board application in January, and I was not able to appear at the February meeting. 
to present anything and was surprised to see that council had voted to uh, oppose uh, the application. Uh, what you see here is uh, the plan uh, layout for the proposed uh, Wells Fargo building. Uh, this building has been uh, vacant for several years. My understanding is the Wells Fargo Bank cleared out shortly after the uh, COVID pandemic. This building has been uh, marketed since 2021 and has been vacant since. Uh, the applicant is proposing to purchase the property, convert the uh, second floor of the more structural part of the building into uh, two residential apartment units while uh, converting the, we'll call it the glass portion of the Wells Fargo Bank into a, I'm going to call it a green, high efficient uh, laundromat. Uh, the applicant operates other uh, laundromats in the uh, in the region. Uh, one uh, closest is located in uh, King of Prussia, and I did take some uh, photographs of that site. If you can uh, scroll to that, just to give you an idea how um, clean, um, up and more upscale uh, this laundromat is. This is the location. I believe it's located at 540 Shoemaker Road in King of Prussia. That is it's what it looks like from uh, the outside. Uh, that's another uh, visual of the outside of it. Uh, that is when you come in the door, there's the cashier section. And looking down the uh, first aisle, as you can see, the uh, stainless steel um, uh, washing machines are there. This, is a, um, this isn't an unmanned facility. There is a full-time employee here at all times. Uh, the hours of operation are 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, there's also the ability to, if, if someone can't be here to wash their own laundry, that they can drop it off with the employee that works there uh, who will wash it, and they can return in a couple hours to um, you know, pick up their uh, clean laundry. Uh, why don't you um, just keep going down into the photographs. I want to get a... So there's, uh, I guess, the center... Uh, location of the existing facility shows, you know, washing machines, uh, water fountains. Uh, that is uh, you know, an aisle looking all the way down to the back. There's different folding stations, machines. Um, there's another uh, view of the same aisle looking towards the front. Uh, that is the rear with some machines and some folding stations. Uh, more machines, just give you an idea. That, that, that's the typical machine in the center. Uh, and there's some stacked uh, machines as well. Um, if you can go back to the, the plan, go to the existing conditions plan first. So as you see, that's the way the uh, site sits out now. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, the drive-through facilities of the bank. Uh, and parking areas and how it's laid out for the bank use. If you can go to the, uh, the proposal. What they're proposing to do is remove those uh, drive-through facilities, create additional parking. Uh, in this area, there is a concrete pad area. They're going to create a, you know, a sitting courtyard area for the, you know, the apartment users or, or folks that are waiting for their laundry. they suggesting and putting in some additional landscaping and greening in that area to really uh, dress it up. Uh, besides the full-time employee, they would have been installing uh, security cameras to monitor the site 24-7 uh, remotely, uh, make sure there's adequate security lighting on the site so that it, it's lit up and that it isn't a, um, you know, a, a detriment to the surrounding neighborhood. I said one of the benefits, I, I know that generally, you know, this is the downtown conservation district, but it is at the, the far end of the district. We hope someday uh, restaurants and other type uses down near the Hanover and High Street intersection will eventually make it down this way. But we do believe that, you know, it's beneficial in having um, this facility uh, occupied to help secure uh, boost up security and safety instead of it being a vacant building at this time. 
So as I indicated, I, I, I wanted the opportunity to come to council, let them see that it isn't your typical uh, run-of-the-mill uh, laundromat coin-operated where uh, you know is unmanned and operated 24/7, and was hoping that maybe council would would reconsider uh, their opposition and maybe suggest instead maybe some reasonable conditions of approval uh, to make this a viable option that both the uh, borough could appreciate and you know finally get somebody into the property that's vacant for several years. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Do you have any economic studies that would show the um, the how this particular laundromat and wood and uh, residential use improves a works for economic revitalization. Mm -hmm. Do you have any studies like that, or or is it just you think that it would be cool? <laughs> <laughs> I would. Well, I, I will tell you right now, I do not have any uh, economic studies. As you see, I have basically some photographs we took and and a plan at this time. Uh, I don't know that the, this will you know will spawn economic development down this end of the town uh, in the immediate future, but it, again, it, it, it provides something in a current vacant space that kind of brings in an investment into the property, and hopefully as things move down this end of the town that, that eventually maybe it can be converted to a better restaurant use or something in the future as, as that time occurs. I, uh, I will note that the type of machines that are in this facility, uh, there are some large capacity machines that in the King of Prussia area, some of the local restaurants use for their, their tablecloths and napkins and that kind of stuff uh, versus sending it out. Uh, also uh, for bedding, apparently uh, uh, there, there's some large capacity machines that are will able to people to do, uh, do their bedding uh, Comforters. Comforters and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But no, I'm not saying this is the savior of the downtown district, but, but it is something. <laughs> you definitely need a nice laundromat. Yes, and that's, that's what I hope. I hope it, you know, you'd say, hey, I would like something nice. What currently is in the borough is not of the caliber of this, and what type of conditions maybe council could re, uh, suggest. Uh, to the zoning hearing board to make this viable both for the applicant and something that the uh, borough would appreciate. I do have some concerns, especially with the time, but I will say, I'll go on what uh, Stephanie said, I personally have been looking for a laundromat. I've been to a couple, they're gross. They have the same type of machines and the large capacity and that's what I went for was my, my comforters. Um, so I'm really concerned that the same thing might happen here, that it's not well kept, that it's dirty. I didn't want to walk into the one I went in. Right. And I have, a, I have concerns with it being open till 11 o'clock. Though I also see the convenience of that. You see where right. I struggle yeah, here? Well, well, people come after work and you know they do their, their laundry. I mean, I don't know if they wanted to shorten those hours, if that would, would be, you know, if it was 7 to 10 or something like that. I, I think you got to give people time to be able to eat dinner and do their laundry after work. But, you know, if, if you know, if the council could suggest reasonable conditions, I think think we could live within to those uh, uh, parameters. And I, not that I expect you all to traipse down the King of Prussia, but you know, have a surprise if you're down that way uh, next weekend. Pop in, do a surprise visit, and so. You know. I actually need to go to King of Prussia for glasses. So. Okay. So you could check I'll it out. I'll swing and by. See, see what their facility with looks like. With my comforter. Yeah. <laughs> Take mine. So. Next, I have a question for Ms. Clark. If she, uh, sorry, Peggy. Uh, to your knowledge, has the peg board has a paid board changed their opinion on this project at all? Uh, we have, this is the first we've seen it. Okay. So, to my knowledge, no. We have a board meeting. Okay. So, Dan, just for council's information, right now, you have a letter with the zoning hearing board opposing mm -hmm. this application. Mm -hmm. uh, Council can 
tentatively list this for Monday night if they want to change their position. They're not required to do anything, um, but that's where it stands. So uh, Monday night, council can decide if uh, any action would be appropriate or required, but nothing is required to be done if your position <clears throat> is unchanged. Okay. We'll I, I have one question, if I may. Sure. Um, Attorney Murray, thanks for joining us for a double header tonight. Um, <laughs> Does the owner currently have any other properties that they own in the borough? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay. That's all. All right. We'll consider this for Monday. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. And Mr. Garner, once again, the fourth annual Martin Luther King Jr. Youth Art Competition. Yes. Uh, I can take that one. Um, yeah, so tonight we have here um, with us Marie uh, Haig, um, and who would like to do a presentation of the youth art competition and also a sidewalk mural request as well. Um, just a reminder, uh, we are trying to keep our presentations to 10 minutes tonight. <laughs> Marie, if you could try to keep it to 10 minutes, given everything we have on the agenda, we'd appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> you might need to give her a second. I don't think she heard you. <laughs> She's frantically trying to prepare. Thank you. There we go. It's at my level. Very good. Um, good evening. That's the word. Thank you so much for having us here. Um, wanted to shed a light on some of the work that we do in town that involves the children in town. So this is Pastor Lockley. You should be up here with me. So this was his brainchild about four years ago um, where he, um, we were on the educational committee uh, at the Pottstown NAACP. And it was, he brought this idea to me like, let's get the kids involved. Um, and make a youth art competition that will get them thinking um, about how they can make their community a better place. Um, now, this is our fourth year doing this. Um, and Pastor Lockley, act, the way it works now is I just, I just call him up. <laughs> can I help organize this, please? Because I love this competition. And of course, I love working with the kids. Um, and so this, as I said, is our fourth year doing it, um, and he is on the religious committee of the Pottstown NAACP, and so they are the host of it, and I just, I just stand behind them and, and organize it. Um, so I wanted to bring the kids here, but let me actually turn it to Pastor Lockley first to have him speak a little bit about it, speak about why this was his brainchild and why we keep doing it and how important it is. And once you get to start seeing some of the artwork and their thoughts behind it of how they can make it a community, it's so exciting and inspiring. And I just want to share that. So I'll, I'll turn it right. to you, Pastor. Good evening, everyone. Um, <laughs> um, it is so important, and we see so many negative things in our communities and throughout uh, throughout the world. And it is so important to um, it will things need to bring us together. And I believe that with art and with our young people getting together to look through the eyes of our young people. And to this year was called the Beloved Community. We're a better together. I think we need to hear that sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think there are so many division and. Uh, we're so divided, and um, these young people this year has, it gets bigger and bigger, and these young people have done a wonderful job um, looking through their eyes, um, through the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King uh, when it comes to the beloved community, but um, I'm going to, I think she's, look, everybody got, has a poster, all right, I, I love it. Um, so that's what we wanted to bring um, tonight as far as looking through the eyes of our young people and um, as far as bringing us together in various ways. So I'm going to turn it right back over to Marie and hopefully we can get some of our young people to share what they have um, learned through their art piece. Wonderful. So we had um, 
because it's a school night. So not many of our winners uh, could come out or our children who, the children who did these art pieces. However, we were able to grab a few. I'd like to ask Jayanna to come up first, if you wouldn't mind. This is her beautiful artwork, and I'm going to ask that she, can you hold those up, John? That she <laughs> say just a little bit about what inspired her. Can I bring this down to you? There. Now does that work? Yeah, you can speak right to me. Um, it inspired me to, um, um, to do it because black people matter, but I didn't have like a sharp ending to write it more deeper. And I kind of messed up a little bit, so I just made the background, and then I put white on that side and black on that side to make white and black. She had asked me for another piece, and I'm like, oh no, you can it's make perfect. it beautiful, and didn't she do that? She did a made wonderful. it beautiful. Good job. You didn't mess up at all. <laughs> daughter Ellie and this is her artwork right here. Okay. Do I have to talk about it now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um this artwork is because of the beloved community and uh I go to the gardens with my mother often and I really do enjoy it and I think maybe if we just art garden all garden together we can grow together as well and become a better place for people and things. Thank you. And then next, Brooke, if you could come up. So Brooke is my, uh, my younger daughter, but not my youngest. She's the middle, as she would say. <laughs> uh, some blank paper. No, you have paper. We or wrote it down in advance. We were talking about like the theme, and you can have a garden with one plant, but it looks better when you have more. They shine more brightly together. And work together. I yes, believe. and yes. That, that's it. So let's read our, our statement. What does it say? We grow better together. But it, it got a bit jumbled, but that doesn't really matter. It's all good. It's all good. Right. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, bro. Thank you. My youngest Malcolm is a little bit nervous. Ellie, if you could walk up with him. Yep. Uh, it's okay. Come on, Malcolm. He's never <laughs> spoke in front of an audience before. So we're just weird adults. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> so Malcolm, can you say what this was about? Do you want to just read the words on the bottom? Can you do that for everybody? Because I don't think they can see it. Here, we'll put it down for your level. Just go ahead and say it really loud. What does it say? Oh, <laughs> oh okay, we tried. Okay. It's okay. okay. I'm just going to help him out. All colors are welcome. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yay. Yay. Good job. Good. He had fun making it. We used a lot of glue. <laughs> <laughs> um, wonderful. So if everybody else, I passed out all of the other artwork. If everybody could just hold up the ones that I passed out. These are all of the other designs, and you can see how wonderful they are. We have Black History Month. That we always do it during the month of February when we're focused on um, the history of black people and being able to shine a light on that. Um, and then you can also see the other ideas, no violence, stop the racism. But even more, I want to talk about this one, the green one. Two young kids worked on this and they just loved it so much. Um, that's right, Annette. <laughs> um, he wanted to make a map and his older sister, he's in pre-K, and his older sister helped him add the people onto what turned out to look like Earth. Um, it's a very well jo done job. And there's, oh, Tom, if you could stand up. This is another one that was so inspirational. Um, so down at the bottom, there's like all these tree roots and it talk, she wanted to convey that there's a lot of negativity or um, darkness in our history um, for America and it kind of seeps into our schools and our buildings and yet, 
there's still so much hope. So if you see there's like a line and everything above it is bright and colorful, and this is what we could do if we just work together. Um, so thank you. But even more, the reason why we chose the theme the beloved community this year was because we were working with Mosaic. Um, and with me, I have Audra, who's on the board of the Mosaic. She also co-founded Potsdam Community Arts, but, but um, she, she's here today because we wanted to incorporate these artworks into a brand new sidewalk mural. Do you have those slides? Oh, they are. Ah, very good, there we are. And I will turn this over. If you could go to the second one. So currently, this is the Mosaic Garden at 423 Chestnut Street. And right now, you can see it's just a long sidewalk in front of their beautiful garden. Um, and about four years ago, I think it was four years ago, uh, there was some graffiti sprayed. And it now says, what independence? And what we want to do is showcase the children's artwork and their dreams and how we can be a wonderful community working together and we can make this the beloved community. Uh, and now I'm gonna pass that over to Audra. Yeah, so like Marie already said with Mosaic Community Land Trust, we've been talking for a long time in board meetings about what to do about cleaning up this graffiti and also about uh, helping the community to consider this a more welcoming space. When we were handing out flyers about it very early this year, getting interest, we found a lot of people even in the neighborhood were saying, oh, I didn't even know I could go in there or what's in there. So I thought, what a great collaboration this would be to incorporate some of this artwork that the youth did into a sidewalk mural design and bring the garden out a little bit, cover up <laughs> the graffiti, and paint some beautiful images here. So hopefully, uh, I can come away from here knowing what the next steps would be for that. The space is, um, what is it, 60 feet by four feet? That's correct, so it's 60 feet long, and then the, the sidewalk's actually just four feet wide. Um, and then an idea would be to maybe uh, incorporate as many of these artworks as possible into that. So once again, we're, we're making the kids' dreams come alive. I hope you can still yeah, hear me. Course. My and voice and, is And importantly, wild. it's the collaboration, so mosaic, you know, con collaborating with the NAACP, with the church, with the community to um, welcome people better into the garden space. And I do want to say one more thing. They have just upgraded this, upgraded, I don't know what, what the right word is, but they've made it more welcoming. So Audrey was saying, I didn't know I could go in there. You can, they just redid it. So the whole front of it is um, now just um, like a garden where you can like just walk into that front gate and it's just like a seating area. And oh, I plan to use it this summer to make art there. Um, so, but it's open for everybody now and I just wanted to share that. I was so excited to see that development. Okay, thank you so Marie, much. Marie and Audra, um, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, they deserve a round of applause, absolutely. Um, thank you. Thank you. Marie and Audra, first, um, thank you for bringing this wonderful energy and passion for a really important topic to our attention. Um, just a couple questions for you guys. So what what is the um, lifespan of the mural? Is this something that would be more of a in permanent in nature or change every like year or more uh, temporary? It should last for several years. Um, we will be using outdoor um, paint, but just outdoor paint, not mural paint, but outdoor paint. And then we'll have to put sand over top so it doesn't get slick um, when water gets on it. Um, and beyond that, um, I paint my own stones in my garden because I, that's the thing I do. And, um, <laughs> And it lasts for several years. So my estimate is probably 10 years, and then it would have to be redone. That's just my okay. good guess. And if we get enough involvement or maybe continuing this contest or we're partnering with other places that want to partner with us, we could update it or, or change it as things happen. You know, the whole point is to get involvement and bring some energy in there. Yeah, that's great. And, and who would do the actual painting? Would it be the children or would it be artists or... Volunteers. Mostly children is what I would like to bring in there. They're the ones who created this artwork, and I'd like to see them, um, at the very least, 
put on the original base coats and, and work on that, and then... Do you guys remember how they did oh, the you. trail mural um, yeah. uh, at Riverfront Park? Park. Um, so we had the, a professional artist, so we would want an artist supervisor, and she kind of just involved the children and what they could do with it, because we really do want the children to feel like they're a part of it so that they're interested in visiting the garden or they can walk by and say, hey, I did that. Remember when we were there? Thank and you. be inspired to take care of their community because now their artwork's a part of it. And we just, that's the whole thing. Get them involved, get them to love their community and, and take care of it. So thank you. And thank you to Pastor Lachlan for working with me every year and Reverend Barrow for working with Reverend Reed. Did you want to say anything, Reverend Reed? Uh, I, I think you said everything. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. The only thing I wanted to say is this, um, the beloved community is the love, to love one another, um, to help the poor, to fight for affordable housing and jobs, to respect and honor differences, to resolve conflicts and problems peacefully with humility, to listen to one another, to aim for reconciliation with restoration, trying to understand and to work in the community with unity. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time, Council. I'm not a mayor. <laughs> okay, we're at 13. Uh, there's a request to establish a business improvement district. Hey. Hard act to follow. Well, I don't have anybody joining me, so I'll try, but I'll try to be efficient. You should have colored some pictures. I... <laughs> this is the way, though, this is the proposal here is exactly what it says a business improvement district. So um, I'm going to try to leave time for questions, so we'll try to move through this quickly. Uh, so according to the Neighborhood Improvement District of 2000, which is a state statute, municipalities are encouraged to create, where feasible and desired, assessment-based improvement districts, a.k.a. BIDS, most consistent with neighborhood needs, goals, objectives, and determined and expressed by property owners in the designated district. Um, you should have received a letter that the businesses or the property owners that signed off representing each one of these areas that are proposed for this bid signed, and it is really the business community which is asking for this. I want to be clear that no owner-occupied residences are being affected or we're asking for an assessment with this. However, there are residents that are rentals that people have that is their business. They are making money off of the rental. So they are included. Um, you will note, and we did have them participate in the uh, listening sessions um, specifically on King Street. The Pottstown bid will be a nonprofit organization with a board, its own board of directors, and it is not an authority. I want to be really clear about that. I think that there have been some questions about it. Um, obviously, there was Padita in the past, um, but this is not an authority, and this is really the businesses that own businesses within the proposed district um, bringing their own thoughts and their own wishes to what will improve the district. So um, just a fact, one of those useless facts that maybe you want to know is there are nearly 1,000 bids in the U.S. Um, some of them are called NIDs, they're neighborhood improvement districts. You probably hear that term a lot in Philadelphia or major cities because there are areas that are trying to revitalize certain neighborhoods. And so this is the same act that allows for their formation. Next slide. 
So just uh, a few local cities and towns that you may have visit, visited that you are aware of that the bid works on these particular things. You can see Westchester, mm -hmm. Lancaster City, King of Prussia, and Allentown. Although some of these places are very different from Pottstown, I would say the most likened one that we have is Lancaster City. So Lancaster City does have the Lancaster City Alliance, which is an independent economic development such as paid. And then they also have a, they have a DID, they have a downtown improvement district that is managed by their economic development entity, but they have their own director as well. So um, that's the one that I would say is most likely. Uh, and certainly the thing that um, has been, we'll talk about how we see uh, working with them. Benefits of the bid, it increases cleanliness, public safety, tourism, property values, community pride, and business sales. That's really the purposes of establishing a bid. So I want to talk a little bit about the process to date and really why we started this conversation is because PAID is an organization, I just heard something else, I was having a conversation with somebody at the downtown center, um, the executive director of the downtown center, and, and he calls it mission adjacent, where I call it mission creep. PAID has really gotten into mission creep, you've heard me talking about like the planters, right? Um, the planners are not something that paid really is core to our mission. Obviously, it does beautify and it makes things better, but it's really not about bringing in businesses and employment centers into the borough of Pottstown. And so we've looked at it, um, we've looked at it from that perspective. So in early 2022, we started having these conversations and Councillor Proxel, you remember we, we had a very early conversation about after we had visited with Lancaster City, um, paid some of paid's um, employees as well as uh, one of our officers of our executive committee went to Lancaster City and we started exploring this opportunity to really, this really started about, interestingly enough, we just had the presentation from Mr. Murray, it really started about the 400 block. That's really where this all started is how can we make improvements but how can we pay for those improvements. Um, and we looked at it and we thought well that's just too small an area. So that's, but what did we need? We needed safety, trash, and placemaking. They were the things that we continued to say over and over and over again. And uh, so, I'm sorry, next slide, Zach. So um, then in a gift came in the form of ARPA dollars. So uh, the county, we were able to apply to the county for ARPA dollars, which gave us some time to really do more research and figure out what would a bid do if we had that financial wherewithal to do things. So what's the first thing we did? We, we got a clean team. And so I think that everybody can agree the positivity that has happened from the downtown having someone regularly there to clean up the sidewalks. Um, and we even have done it into, we've even increased that into part of King Street, so we've already increased it. The reality of it is when those ARPA dollars go away, and they will go away, there is no way to pay for that service. We do, pay does not have the financial, we have enough to just keep track of ours. We do not have that money to be able to continue this. It is $50,000 a year. And when we talk to Lancaster, this is where the most of their budget goes in Lancaster City. So a clean team is really, really important. Um, and that is one of the things along with things like planting and so we looked at forming a steering committee with a cross-section of parcel owners. Because the other thing was we knew we had to be able to raise enough funds to be able to make uh, impact. In early 2023, we held two in-person and two virtual steering committee meetings with uh, a variety of building owners. 
We researched successful existing PA bids, began the outreach of a bid leadership team, and we drafted the bid plan. Um, we did work with county planning to generate a parcel map, which I'll show you in a few moments. We mailed 268 information and invitation letters to parcel owners to come to the information sessions and to give them some briefing about what was being proposed. Um, you will see, I believe it's a total of 300 and I don't want to transpose my numbers, so I want to tell you a true number. Um, we are looking at 362 properties. So you say, okay, we, we mailed 268. That's because there are people who own multiple parcels within the district, the proposed district. We held two other in-person steering committees. We did help hold three different information session dates where approximately 30 individuals attended and provided feedback. One of the <coughs> things that we heard loud and clear was we were going too far on North Hanover, so we pulled that back. So we edited the draft plan based upon feedback from parcel owners and further research. Um, and then in early 2024, we hosted yet another steering committee. We finalized the bid plan, circulating that through that group. We met with borough council members in the proposed districts because, as I said, initially it was in the downtown. It was looking at just that area. We looked at... Um, why can't I think of the name? Think. Hobart's Run. No. Uh, <laughs> no. It. Office Park. Oh. Thank you. Circle, Circle of Progress. Of progress. Yeah. Woo! That just went out of my... I'm sitting here going, committee of the... No. <laughs> Circle of Progress. Uh, we looked at Circle of Progress, and really that comes out of a conversation that Justin and I had pre-COVID many, many years ago about them wanting to look at... Um, signage there. They Those property owners pay $100 a year, I think, to maintain the airport sign. That That's what they, they pay up there. And so, um, but there's an opportunity for walking trails. There is some opportunity for some placemaking, some picnic area. And so we know that it is not the same as downtown, but there is an opportunity to improve <coughs> and make it a more connected entity to the rest of the borough. Um, we received signatures from the steering committee members, which is what you have seen in your packets. Um, and again, a lot of them are multiple parcel owners. There is a map here, uh, which the County Planning Commission helped put us together, um, and the turquoise at the top, well, my top left, is Circle of Progress, which is also known as the Pottstown Municipal Airport Campus. Um, and then you can <coughs> see the turquoise um, showing you. So it's mostly high street. It goes Manitoni through the 500 block. Um, one thing that we heard from the 500 block was interesting was they really liked the fact that they were included in the banners and, and the clean team at this point. Um, they really felt like they were a forgotten part of the borough a lot of times. And so they enjoy um, being included in it. Um, so we also are going up North Hanover and the Southern Gateway, which would be South Hanover, and then parts of King Street. There are several um, newer owners on King Street in kind of that Harb District area, but they are rental properties. And we did hear from three or four of them that were uh, own properties in other places that have bids like Westchester, and they were generally favorable of the proposal. <coughs> So um, let's get down to the dollars. Listen, the reality is, right, when you go to somebody, you have to provide value because you can't just say to people, oh, and like, is everybody going to go, yay, charge me more money? 
No, but if they're going to get value and they're going to get something for that that's going to increase their property value, they are interested in being a part of it. So the majority of bid properties, uh, there are over 200 of the bid properties. They've, they are valued anywhere from $1 to $99,999. So if you take the average, it would be an additional $191 on a property owner. Obviously, at three mills, the individual property annual fees will vary. If the assessed value is more, they'll pay more um, than that. If they're at the lower end, they'll pay less than that. It's important to note, full transparency, those assessed fees are not going to pay for everything that needs to be done. There's a lot of groundswell about events and wanting to have events at a variety of places. Those types of events will take sponsorship dollars, and that and the bid staff would be responsible to work with the board to raise those sponsorship dollars. So what the bid, the assessments will pay for will be things like plantings, banners, cleaning of the sidewalks. Those are the types of things that will get done, but there will also have to be the pursuing of grant dollars as well as sponsorship dollars for larger scale. Um, certainly something like a trail that would be a connective trail through Circle of Progress, that would be the perfect opportunity for grant dollars. Uh, bid board organization, these were the questions. Uh, so I, have to, I had to ask um, one of the staff members who paid today to explain to me. So there's a lot of them, so let's go down to the middle bullet point there. That is not all of those people, it's one property owner from either the 0 to 199 East High Street, North York, between High and King, and, I'm sorry, or South Hanover Street between High and Industrial Highway. Some of these people obviously own multiple properties throughout different areas, um, so that would, be, that would be the bid organization, and they would be... Uh, they would be open to three-year terms once it gets organized. So that is really the, the whole presentation. So the request that we're seeking tonight is for council to hold a public meeting at least 30 days from today. That is the requirement by statute um, to hear from the affected property owners. Further, we are requesting um, by statute the opposing, any opposing property owners, it has to be 40% have to oppose in writing um, for the establishment within 45 days. So then we would be looking, um, depending on what the outcome was of the hearing and that 45 day period, we would look for Borough Council to approve the establishment of a bid at its <coughs> July 8th meeting, 2024. So that's my presentation. I don't know whether I did it in 10 minutes. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Did Go I ahead. Allow... I'm sorry. You said 10 minutes. Did I do 10 minutes? No, no, it's not. Was it over? I'm sorry. It's fine. <laughs> it's supposed to be I'm here. Just okay. Okay. Um, the question for you. Sure. Um, as somebody who was involved in Pedita, and I know you said this ain't Pedita, I get sure. it. It is not. Okay. But they had a similar problem with regard to mandatory assessments, okay? What is the collection procedure, uh, procedure going to be when some of those eventually decide that they're not getting the groovy stuff that they think that they were going to get and they decide to stop paying? What is, I know that Padita actually tried to put liens on properties. Correct. Okay, so what's, what's the plan for that? Because that's probably going to happen. So we did factor into the budget, and uh, Councillor Minostra, we did, <laughs> we did factor into that uh, that there would be some non-payment, and frankly, it's why we looked at the area that we looked at to increase. Yes, because of property values. I mean, I'll give you an example, and this is one when we first well the four hundred block, forget it. We knew that there wasn't enough assessment there to make significant difference, right? We couldn't offer the services. And the other example that I continually look at is when we looked at just High Street from Manitoni 
to uh, through the 400 block, there are six properties that assess for over $1 million. Only one of them is on the tax rolls. So we had to really look at including this building that we're sitting in, right? Well, so, of course, you know, and it's not to say that those entities aren't making significant improvements or significant, you know, uh, effect, right, on this, this borough, but it's still the reality of it, right? So it's numbers, it's numbers. And so that's why, that is why. And the other issue, um, the other issue is certainly in what we learned at Lancaster City is, uh, you know, the churches give to the did voluntarily, but they give because they're getting their trash picked up outside their sidewalk like everybody else. Excellent. So, um, you know, we would hope that there would be, you know, in-kind services or some sort of donation. Okay. Cool. Great. Anybody else? Anyone else? <clears throat> I read your request. Uh, you would like us to hold a public hearing within 30 days, th more than 30 days? 30 days from today. It has to be at least 30 <laughs> days. So we're on the calendar. We're on the clock. Okay. So that's why we're asking. We would like to have it 30 days from tonight. Um, but That would be our May meeting. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank cool. you. Thank you. We'll see to it. Next time I'll have artwork. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. <laughs> it does. Okay. Manhole frames. The bid is in. Yes, so for the next two items, um, we have the bids in. We're still looking at the results, and we'll have a recommendation for you on Monday night. Okay, we'll enter that for Monday. Uh, 16, uh, Memorandum of Understanding. Yes, yeah, so this has to do with our part um, bus service, and this is to provide planning assistance and coordination to part um, through a contract with DVRPC. And they're going to help us to address, address some of the final outstanding items from the uh, triennial review that we still need to close out that, that review. Okay, is there any action we need to take? Um, yes, so it looks like there's an MOU that we'll need to approve for Monday. Okay. Let's list that for Monday. Uh, 17, uh, Consolidated Capital Grant Application. Yes, this one is for part as well, and this is uh, to do a capital purchase of a service vehicle with a mechanics body um, and electronic bus stop signage at the Transportation Center. Um, the grant is just under 20000 and then the local match would be $648. So we're asking for a resolution for that on Monday night. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> All right. Please add that. Okay. DCED grant. Yes. Yeah, so this is another grant request, and um, <coughs> this is going to be for the Ricketts Community Center. Um, we are seeking $2 million, which is the maximum amount. Um, that uh, we can ask for, and we're basically asking for the max um, because we want to see what we can get for that, and it'll, usually it'll get whittled down a little bit. Anyway, there is no match with it, so that's the big thing. Well, we can ask for a higher match as well. Um, so mainly this is to look at um, safety and accessibility, ADA um, pathways, a lot of exterior site um, work, pedestrian ways, parking areas, as well as interior lighting, bathrooms, um, some abatement that needs to be done on the flooring there. And um, also it will look at uh, funding some professional service. So architects would also be involved with uh, some of this as well. So um, we would like a resolution for that for Monday night as well and see um, how successful we might be. Very good. Okay, we'll list out. And there's an ordinance request for a new parking sign. This was um, coming from a request uh, regarding some accidents that we had on Glasgow Street, which actually is right, uh, serves as, as um, the borough uh, line for borough and West Pottsgrove Township. 
So we had the PD go out and do a, uh, a study of that area. Um, they came up with a couple recommendations. We then followed up and we sent letters out to um, all of the residents and got their feedback. And what they're recommending is that we install no parking from here to corner, 30 feet on six intersections um, in, at all intersections uh, in the borough along Gla Glasgow Street. So there's a total of six in there. And um, part of this stemmed from some accidents that were happening um, and not being able to see due to cars being parked right up to the intersection. So we think this will help to address that. Uh, okay. deficit. Very good. Very good. Sorry? Your, your award. Oh, yeah. Uh, we had talked about it. Um, I was willing to do whatever the residents wanted, so I was glad that we got um, some information back from them. So, yeah, I'm absolutely fine okay. with doing that. List that for approval. Hmm? Okay. Um, fire department ordinance amendment. Mr. Garner? I think we, I think we skipped one there. Yeah, I think, I think oh. you skipped the... Oh, oh the fire... Uh, Oh, the fire study. Go ahead. So this is another grant opportunity that we're looking at. This one is for technical assistance as it relates to the fire department. And what it would look at is examining enhancements to improve efficiency of our fire department. Um, so uh, basically it would conduct a comprehensive study of kind of the, uh, mainly the administrative and operational functions of the fire department and, and the individual companies um, with the ultimate goal of coming up with um, uh, administrative, uh, more administrative recommendations that will help to deliver services more efficiently um, and help to manage escalating costs um, and really just try to optimize the utilization of our current manpower and um, resources. So this is another one that uh, does not require a match and um, we would ask council if they would support this to pass a resolution on Monday night so that we can move forward and apply. Okay. Very good. List that one. And now the amendment. Chuck. That's Chuck. Yeah, thank, thanks, Dan. Um, Chief Hand is recommending some changes to our fire department ordinance. I think the information is in your packets um, with uh, the removal of Empire from the uh, the fire company rotation uh, Chief would like to have a little bit more authority to assign fire officers to oversee emergencies uh, <clears throat> fire. So uh, the language suggested is in your and with your approval we will prepare and advertise the ordinance change as the chief is recommending Very good any question All right, list that one and while I have you, Mr. Garner, the zoning appeal for 55 High Street. Uh, yeah, I was I was originally going to tell council about what the application was about, um, but the hearing was actually held Monday night. This uh, is in the downtown. It was a request for a grocery store. Um, it's in a mixed juice building, so it did require zoning relief. Uh, if you recall, we had a similar uh, request for a grocery store in the downtown a few months ago. And at that time, council supported the request so long as there were some conditions imposed to make sure that the grocery store didn't turn into some type of convenience store. So uh, the zoning hearing board heard the case Monday night. They did grant the relief, but uh, they actually imposed the same conditions as they did for the other establishment on High Street. So those same uh, protections will be in place to make sure that this doesn't evolve into a neighborhood convenience store. So that's already occurred. Um, I can't quite explain how it happened so quickly. The application, I think, was received in early March. So it was really a very quick uh, turnaround by the zoning hearing board to have that hearing. Uh, they've been getting a lot of appeals lately, and I think they're you know trying to get those in within the 60 days. So anyway, I don't think there's any harm done, but I did want to report that 
the relief was granted, but the conditions that uh, you guys wanted for the other store were imposed on this as well. So um, I, hopefully that, that is what you would have wanted. Uh, I sense it was because you did it before. Very good. Where's next? Uh, how about uh, 120, 142 maker? Sure, that's a land development plan that has uh, come through the Planning Commission. Uh, there are several parcels up on Shoemaker Road that will be consolidated. Uh, I guess it's a rather large self-storage building that's being proposed with parking and driveway access. Uh, the site will be in excess of two acres. Uh, Planning Commission uh, recommended approval, I guess, at its February meeting, Dan, if I recall correctly. Correct. Um, they have agreed to uh, all the uh, requirements of the borough engineer. Uh, it looks like a nice project. Uh, there are two <clears throat> zoning issues that are outstanding. Uh, you should have the plan attached to your packet. Yep. Uh, the review letter from Cedarville looks like it's dated uh, from July, but uh, there's been a resubmission. You may have a new letter, but the applicant has confirmed that all the comments will be addressed. I think there's also a waiver request letter for two minor waivers. Mm -hmm. They were also uh, recommended by the Planning Commission. They be granted, and the plan is ready for your consideration Monday. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to try to answer those. Any questions for this one? Okay, we'll list that for action Monday evening. And, uh, oh, 172 Hanover Street, Mr. Garner. Uh, yes, this is an existing single-family dwelling, and the uh, owner wants to add another unit to be used kind of as a bed and breakfast. Uh, in order to do that, there's some zoning relief <coughs> that's required. Um, actually, the, the square footage of the building exceeds what the maximum size would be permitted uh, by creating the additional unit. Um, they would also be short one parking space, and they would need a special exception for the bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. So this has not yet been scheduled before the Zoning Hearing Board. Uh, council has the option, as you know, to take no position, uh, support the request, or recommend that the request be rejected. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess this would be... It's fine. Board. Yeah. Actually, it's one of my favorite houses. You're warned. Hmm? <clears throat> familiar with it? I'm sorry? You're familiar yes, with it? Yes, I'm familiar with the house. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll vote up or down on Monday evening. Or, or take no action, whatever you want. Me too. All right. Uh, permission to use parking lot one for a climb on an event. I think, I think there's one more zoning, Dan. I think. Uh, oh, 200 Shoemaker. You're right. Yes, yeah, so, uh, as I indicated, the zoning <coughs> hearing board has been busy. Um, this is another application. This is actually Chipotle, and uh, this is a request for some sign relief. Uh, our highway business ordinance permits, I think, three signs, a total of 70 square feet. I think they're looking for a few extra signs, primarily on the door or window of the facility. Mm -hmm. uh, the signs are particularly large, but the signs don't comply with our current ordinance. So they're seeking uh, relief to allow the standard Chipotle signs to be placed on the building. Uh, I don't think that hearing's been scheduled yet, but council can weigh in if you'd like. So that's the request. Okay. That's... Yours? Mm. You have two pulses? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You want to look at it over the weekend? No, I've looked at it. And? I'm okay with signage. We know we have a problem with signs. So. Okay. As long as it's their standard sign. Yeah. Got it. Yes, it is. The, if you, the application's attached, and it should, should have some information about what the signage is, but it's typical Chipotle as far as their normal. <laughs> Very good. Now, it's 200 Shoemaker. All right, now they want to use our parking lot for a climb event. Justin. Yes, yeah, so this is, uh, again, being uh, held by uh, Pottstown Children's Discovery Center. 
Uh, they would like to use lot number one uh, or the Reading lot. Uh, we've done this before uh, with them. Uh, on a, I think it was on a little bit of a smaller scale. I think this will be a lot larger scale. It would take up most of the borough-owned um, Reading lot, but I believe it does leave one bay of parking adjacent to the um, railroad track. So um, provided that there aren't any other street closure events that day, which I'm not aware of that there are now, um, it should be uh, fine to be able to accommodate them on that day. Okay. I took the boys to that last year. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Any questions? We'll list that for Monday. <clears throat> 627 street closure for Juneteenth. Yeah, so this uh, year they are looking to expand their street closure um, uh, beyond just Smith Family Plaza, but they would like to extend York Street to Charlotte Street um, and then the cross street of Hanover and King um, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I see that we have Denise Williams in attendance here with us tonight. So um, I just wanted to turn it over to her so that she could describe the event to you guys. And uh, if there are any other additional requests or questions, you can put them forward at this time as well. Hello, everyone. Um, Councilman, Councilman, Councilwomen, Madam, Pre um, Madam Mayor, <laughs> Madam President, Mayor, <laughs> President, whatever you want to be saying. Yeah. Um, I am excited about this year's Juneteenth. It is a collaboration of a lot of our community partners. And as um, Justin said, we are looking to um, shut down from York all the way to Charlotte. So I want you guys to take a minute just to envision what this is going to look like. So if you want to close your eyes, just go with me to Honestly. what June 15th is going to look like. I am, we are working to have first right in front of Smith Family Plaza, we are going to have a three-on-three -three basketball tournament. The three-on-three -three basketball tournament is being um, um, Howard Brown and the Eyeball Association. They are working with that piece. Within Smith Family Plaza, we also are looking at having vendors and businesses and pro um, propelling our black-owned businesses and our business, um, our nonprofits within the community to be able to um, make sure the resources are um, available and being seen on that day. We have Tower Health who will be doing health screenings. We have vendors. We will have a kid zone. T-Mobile is coming to give free internet and do some other things with the community. They also are looking to um, give their, they brought ice cream for everybody. A. So I, I don't, I mean, free ice cream, I, I, I'm all for it. Um, and then on top of that, we are infusing um, an African American museum in that piece as well. We are looking at, um, there's a car, sh a car show that will be infusing African American history. So being able to bring all cultures together, because we know that there's a lot of people that love a car show. There's a lot of people that love to eat. There's a lot of people that love sports. You bring us all together, we get that community that Marie was speaking about. Mm -hmm. And that is the theme and the, and the purpose of this year's event. So I am very excited and I want to personally invite you all to that and hope that you take a walk with your family during that event. Also, and that it's that, if you guys approve, which as you can see my heart, I hope you approve, um, that will be on June 15th. But then on June 19th, we're also having a scholarship gala. Now, last year, if you're aware of the Juneteenth event, we were able to give away seven 350 scholarships, 350 scholarships to students within the Pottstown community. This year, we're giving seven, again, $500 scholarships. Mm. As we continue to build this um, event, we would like for the final destination of the scholarship to be 1865 18, um, for each student to receive that in honor of the year the Juneteenth. Um, happen so as you and again that's seven scholarships so the goal is to continue to grow this event the go goal is to continue to have all our community partners involved this is not a be resilient event this is a community event you just see me at the in the making some waves but this is there's a lot of great people and great organizations behind this as well so as Justin alluded to I am here to ask for something additional you would expect no less right so I would hope and I'm request asking if we can have a discussion around a Juneteenth flag being flown um, during the event or during June. 
So I have worked with Andy and Michael in regards to some options. They did give me the option of flying, having a flag on the same wire that is available <coughs> to July 4th. Have done the um, budget and analysis in regards to that. That's about a $3,000 bucket mm. to create a flag, because we have to create a 39 by 20 flag for that. They also gave me the option of a banner. The banner, again, because of that length, is still around the same amount of money. The other piece about that is um, the, um, the liability for it being on the wire. I don't, I, I want I would love, I know that we can do it, but I really would like to make sure that when Pottstown is ready to do that major scale, that we are ready for the liability, ready for all those things that takes place there. What I am proposing and asking for you guys to consider is the, on High Street, we have the black light post. They're so pretty. They have the, they have the, um, the flower pots. They have the American flags. They have the veteran flags. Can we add a Juneteenth flag on, and I'm not asking for the all of June, if you, but if you grace me with that, that would be an honor. But I'm just asking for the week um, from June 13th until the 20th, so the, the week of leading up into the event and then after the gala um, and whatever that would look like for the council to be able to support. Now, I do understand that there are some um, ordinance around flags, but if we look at, there's some surrounding um, Montgomery, community count, Montgomery counties, such as Ambler um, and some other counties that have also done this, and I believe in Pottstown and us being at the helm, the helm of being in the right, on the right side of history, and with all the things that are taking place currently, as far as the train coming and all these exciting things happening in our Pottstown community, isn't this another great step towards being a testament of how we are an inclusive community, how we are a community moving in the right direction, when we look at what we're bringing into the community, when we look at what we're, we're representing, I think that this just sets us apart from other communities that may not be ready to make this step, but Pottstown saying, we are. And that's all I got. I didn't need the whole <laughs> 10 minutes. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. Would you be opposed to like um, maybe like flag on, like one flag on the flag pole underneath the American flag? Absolutely not. And that was, that was my original request, but I didn't know if that was if that was available because I know there are some stipulations around that. So I am really open to whatever council says that they can do. Even if you say, Denise, this year we can't do, we can't afford them. Guess what? I will Amazon, Google, bundle <laughs> order, tell me how many there is, and then we can look for, for ordering a bigger piece where we can do the whole entire high street because it's just going to get bigger and better. So we can start small, but Eventually, we're going to need all the high street. I'll, I'll just come ask you guys every year. You're going to get tired of me. No, not you. Going to get tired of me. Okay. So, yes. And, and forgive me. Do we, is there a picture of the Juneteenth flag? flag. Or is it, has that been developed yet? It has. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the Juneteenth I flag. Yeah. Yeah. One. I wouldn't tell you it would be nice to know. And I, I apologize, my printer was actually acting up, so I, I came with the idea that I was gonna have packets for each of you guys, but that didn't happen. But the Juneteenth flag is actually red, white, and blue. Um, and it, and let me just tell you what the colors represent. Um, the red, white, and blue represents the American flag and the reminder that the slaves and their descendants were and are Americans. Um, the June 19, 1865 represents the day that enslaved black people was freed from Gaveston, Texas and became Americans under law. And while the Americans today, while we know African Americans today are still fighting for equality and justice. Um, the colors symbolize the continuous commitment of the people in the United States to do better and to live up to the American ideal of liberty and justice for all. So it's a beautiful flag. It is this one. Yes. This, yes, this yeah. one, yep, that one right. So there are other, there are, um, this is the, there's this one as well, but there's, there's other, uh, there's, you, 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 will, you will see either this one or this one. I am proposing this one. Yes. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to know. 
All right. Are there any other questions for Denise? All right. Can you stay a look into the possibilities? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll get back to you before Monday night. All right. Oh, is that good? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you. the action would be Monday night. So tonight's just a workshop session to explore ideas, and then Monday they would potentially vote. Okay. Yeah. If you need any information, Justin knows where to just send me an email, Absolutely. and I'm more than willing to provide you guys with additional information. Okay. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Okay, 28 street closure request from Red Horse. This one was uh, on the agenda, committee of the whole agenda last month, um, and uh, the organizers had decided to pull it because um, there were some issues with how the signatures have been collected. So, um, and, and also some uh, discussions on uh, balancing out the, the needs for the car show versus um, mainly the Steel River uh, Playhouse. Mm -hmm. So um, they did go out, they got new, new signatures, um, and that was attached uh, for you guys to look at. And at this point, um, you know, there are basically two options that uh, we could go with to try to provide some kind of accommodation here. So you should have received an email earlier tonight from um, Steel River requesting that uh, they make June 1st the exception to having uh, a, a car show uh, and wait, not, not having the car show, but waiting to close the high street until the, the originally planned 4 p.m. time. So instead of closing the street at 1, closing it at 4 on June 1st. Um, so that would allow, uh, they have a big event that it's going on that day um, that they've already planned. Um, so that's one option. Mm -hmm. um, Red Horse, uh, they are not totally willing to do that first option, but they're willing to cone off a, uh, a car lane until 3 p.m. to Steel River so that they can make drop off of their patrons. So how that would work is that there would be a there would be a line of cones along the north side of High Street, and then their patrons could come in uh, south on Charlotte Street, turn right on High, and then turn right on Penn and get back out. So they would open that circle so that they could get their patrons in, and then um, that would be you know shut down then after 3 p.m. So those are the two options at this point. So that that one, the last one you were saying, that's cool. That's that little barricade to go around mm -hmm. it's going to be during the car show so people are going to be walking and and stuff like that you know like i think it's during the setup or or so the setup until, until yeah. three o'clock yeah. yeah yeah i think their show starts at one isn't their show start at one the steel river performance steel river yes starts at one and when is the car shows the car show want to open up when do we have a date for or a, a time for four, four o'clock? Four o'clock. Yeah, yeah. So that would so it would be the Horse setup. Was the setup time because the reason the why issue. they, if you recall, the reason why Red Horse wanted to open or close the street at one is mm -hmm. so that they could have time to set up. So the time of the car show will still start at four o'clock, I guess. Okay. Did we um, go over this with Steel River that part? Yes, we did review that with Steel River, and, and um, we didn't we didn't, didn't receive feedback on that. But okay. we received feedback that, that they would prefer that you just make the exception on June first, and just let them close the street at at four o'clock just for that one show. All the other shows, they would be fine with them starting at one. That seems reasonable. And then Red was had a problem with that. Oh no, they were okay with that. I, I don't know if this can, if this can. I hate to see two very great organizations that do yeah. so much good for this Absolutely. town right. at odds. It's not good. They can. Okay? They can. I collaborate. Is it possible that they're still? Because I know that they were talking, and Lena and Dan Glennon and Steve were talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were reaching almost some sort of an agreement, and then something happened. Is it possible? To pull out the June first one and say, guys, come and work, come back, to the, come back to the drawing board and work with something because you really don't want you guys at odds with each other because you're both excellent people. If they could just switch that one, 
car show for June? I, I don't know. But we'll just say, in other words, force the two people into a room. Well, I think there was, <laughs> I think Lena, there was an email. And at the time before this meeting, she had not heard back from them. Mm -hmm. uh, so her request was, if this is going to go through for that one car show in June, just to keep the four o'clock, leave, don't close the street at one, let them have their show. And I think that's reasonable. Like you said, you don't want these two coming together. This is ridiculous. We need our businesses to work together. There was issues with the signatures. This kind of didn't work out from the beginning. So can everybody just be grown up and say, just this one car show for June, we're going to leave it at 4 o'clock. They can have the 1 o'clock for the rest of them. Is that not reasonable? I was hoping to just pull it off and say... Pull it all together. Pull that, pull that application to close the street on June 1st together. Come back next month and ask us yeah. after you've had time to work together and come up with something because it doesn't sound like Red, Red Horse liked, liked what they wanted and... Uh, what uh, Steel River didn't like what Red Horse wanted. Um, there was, you know, Red Horse came up with some concept about the whatever, that seems the left, right, center, whatever. Okay, whatever they were doing. It's already <laughs> congested. Okay. Like, to well, in the past, in the past smart day. people. They, these are all smart mm -hmm. people. They can figure it out. Dan's not here tonight. I don't see him in the uh, audience. I was, I was hoping to ask him. I, mean, I, I did look at all the, the petitions and all the signatures. And just, to me, at least, it really wasn't clear what they were signing. If they were just, you know, they were giving the car show a thumbs up. Or I'm not sure if it really clearly stated yeah, about the so one o'clock. Yeah, that was a little bit. Um, we haven't seen that before, a combined petition for the car show and the low show. But we do have Jamie Orr here. And maybe, I, I assume you were involved in that process. Maybe you could explain to them what was presented to the businesses when they signed. So both parties went out together and spoke to the business owners at the same time and explained that it was for the Saturday, the first of the month, May through September, and then also the first Sunday of September. So that was for all of those combined. Um, we did move the first, the first Saturday in September does not fall on the first Sunday of September. So we agreed and with guidance, we did move it to August 31st. So we combined the road closure essentially, saying, hey, the one day a year, we have two days for car show together, which was always the intent, rather than having two weekends, one after the other, of car show closures. And they were aware that they would be closing at 1 o'clock, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was shown there. We had the. Um, the road closure printed out, everything there, which is in the applications as well. Thank you, Jamie. That, glad you were here to clarify that. Sure. So I can't speak so much to them on Saturday. Um, I believe they are going to be there tomorrow, or sorry, Monday, um, before that meeting, which, yeah. Okay. All right. What I envision. This show is going to run from College Drive to Washington or Franklin Street. And even if they open at 1 o'clock, they can't staff all six blocks at once. If they start their setup at College Drive and work east, they can hold that last block open until 3 o'clock. I can't speak to them on the Saturday. I agree. I'm yeah, sitting here as a, a third really party. I think Jamie's the person to ask this question to. Yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. I'm Ben, it ain't in. <laughs> Not to wash my hands of it, but no, yeah. I agree that they should both be yeah. able to make you it. You can sit yeah. down. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just a second. Right. Uh, Any chance you can get the two together before Monday? That's what we asked last month. I know. I did that. I mean, it's up to them to agree. Right. It's these are two. Gotta work it these are two good one options. One, yeah. They've got like to just figure it out. They, they, yep. they grown. You can't hold their hand. Well, right. the second one seems like it would be really difficult and That's confusing for people to come in. Control. It's one car show, a couple hours. Yeah, they need to work it out. Work it out. I'm going to say yes. Yes. What do you What do you have, Peggy? <laughs> oh, Peggy, yes. 
Thank I you, didn't see it. I want to be clear, just because I signed the paperwork, the original paperwork, paid is right, we're not picking sides in any way, shape, or form. The only thing that I would say is requesting is I would like to see this resolved before Monday night because technically they are not supposed to be marketing and, mm -hmm. and if you wait till next month, it'll be May, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not supposed to be marketing at this point, which I'm sure they are, but, um, <laughs> and everybody knows that it's, you know, it's going to come, right? Oh, but absolutely. I just want to, we are kind of butting up against a time frame. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, I think that, Listen, you guys just make the decision, and they're going to have to live with it. They have the opportunity, and we will advise them. They have the opportunity until Monday night to figure mm -hmm. something out. And if that's not, you guys just make the decision. That's why. Right, that's a, so be it. And that's going to be unfortunate if that has to happen. But yes. that's what it is. Yeah, so. no, I hear you. That's right. I think both are fine options. So. Yeah, I go with what's that. Everybody's canceled. <laughs> okay. Sounds good to me. That's Red Horse next and then the low show um, yes yeah, so this will be uh, High Street Manitoni to Evans and then Hanover Street to King and Security Plaza um, the road would begin closing at uh, 5 a.m. on Sunday and um, it would end at 8 p.m. and then parking um, would, would begin on Saturday 8 p.m. until Sunday uh, 10 p.m. So I do have Jamie here. I don't know if there's any updates uh, since the last year. Welcome. Thank you. I'll be incredibly quick, I hope. Um, <laughs> exactly the same format layout. We're not extending to College Drive or anything. The only thing we had last year was when me and my staff are out at 4 or 5 in the morning when the road is starting to be closed. It's a safety issue, and we're hoping to bring more decorations, etc. cetera. Um, so we don't want to close the road overnight again from um, the police, et cetera, that have given us input on that. And we don't want to impact my town. <laughs> um, so we would like to just close the parking and keep that closed. So the road will be open. High Street and Hanover will be open overnight for normal traffic. Deliveries can be made, et cetera. But we will just keep the sites closed off there. Um, which we have seen essentially happens anyway with parking for people staying in the town. And then my um, sales pitch metrics, which you probably all heard, we did have visitors that we know of from 22 U.S. states last year come to the town and 10 international countries for the weekend. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we're doing some good marketing for the town, et cetera. But that's our change this year is to ask for that partial closure overnight just for safety and for ease of setup. And again, three hours later in the evening so we can do more trash pickup, et cetera. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. And one more. How about Memorial Day? All right, this one's pretty straightforward. Um, it'll begin at 10 a.m. and end at 11 a.m. So it'll go down on um, uh, West High, north to Manitoni, to Memorial Park at the Manitoni entrance. Good. List that one. Uh, 30, we're at 31, the skill games. Mr. Garner. Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, I think Council has talked about skill games several times now. And uh, the same status quo uh, is that no outside regulation from any entity on these games. Um, I think we had a preliminary discussion about some type of monopoly for an entity to kind of regulate these, and I'm not sure that would pass legal muster. But uh, council does have the ability to license these types of devices um, and obtain a license fee for these. It's within your general police power to do that. Uh, we have uh, licensing ordinances in place for other types of devices and mechanical games. And uh, staff's suggestion is that uh, you authorize us to prepare an amendment to your licensing ordinance to specifically include these types of skill games. And uh, we'll present you with information to come up with a reasonable licensing fee for these so they can have some regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, right now they have none. Um, happy to answer any questions. Happy to hear any thoughts of counselors on the topic. But uh, we haven't done anything because we didn't want to move forward without your blessing and support. Anyone? 
I have a question. Yeah, I, of course I do. Sorry, Andrew, go ahead. I'd like to see something happen with this. I feel when I, whenever I am in a place that has these things, these skill games, they seem to be played exclusively by those who should not be playing them. Okay. Casinos. No, this is not a casino. Okay. <laughs> they are played by, and I watch these people, and they usually have an ATM next to them. <laughs> and I watch these, these people who should not be playing, okay, and they pump their money into this instead of into positive things on the hope that they're going to hit a jackpot, which they will then try to double and then lose it all. It's a redistribution of wealth from people who don't have a lot of wealth and shouldn't be doing this into the pockets of people, and they're not putting anything back into the community. They're taking from the community, they're taking from the poorest of our people, and they're not putting anything back. I'm not saying they put it all back, but they should put something back in the form of licensing. If that can be done, I talked to Mr. Garner about that. That would be awesome. If it's unconstitutional, okay. But I would like to see something done to make sure that it's not all profit off of the backs of those who can't afford it and are wishing to hit the jackpot. And we all know that's not usually what happens. Somebody that's gone to the casino quite a bit. That's not what happens. <laughs> and I think you should go to the casino. Okay, but that's, I haven't that's, many years. Oh, yeah, so you're up. You, I'm sorry. So I don't disagree. Um, my issue is, isn't the state planning on doing something? I know we've talked about this, and I thought I heard there was something in the works as far as, as the state regulating these like they do casinos. Um, my concern is if we spend all this time coming up with something that the state's just going to come and we're going to have wasted our time. So if I'm wrong about that, Chuck, if you could speak to that, whether or not the state, I, go ahead. Yeah, I, I can try to speak to it, but I certainly can't predict what the state legislature sure. might do. Um, there's been talk about this now for probably a year that the state would like to get their hands in this and like to regulate it somehow. Um, haven't seen anything specific as far as a bill or, or, a, or a law that might be proposed either in the House or State Senate. Um, I don't know the timing if and when that even happens. Uh, there's also the possibility, Lisa, that uh, even if the state does regulate it, we may not be totally preempted from a licensing requirement. Okay. Um, we still can, you know, regulate things at a local level unless they're totally preempted by the law. And right now we don't know enough about that. Um, we, again, staff use this as something that is relatively simple to do through an ordinance amendment and some data collection to license these things. and. If ultimately in a year or two years or three years uh, we pr get preempted by the state, then we're out of luck. But for the short term, we don't see anything coming down the pike. And uh, obviously, it's your call, Council, if you want us to, to move forward with this. Uh, we think we could have this done within 60 days. So I don't think we're you know talking a long period of time. And certainly, I don't foresee the state doing anything quicker than that if they do anything at all. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, list that for Monday. And we have upcoming board vacancies. Uh, there's yeah. one for EAC, two for HARB, two for Land Bank. For anyone that wants to apply. And okay, comments from our citizens. We have. All right, um, just a reminder that uh, everyone will have uh, five minutes to speak, and you must be a taxpayer or resident. I know I'm up first, so I just thought I'd say this. <laughs> I'm standing up first. Thank you for your attention this evening. Um, my happy story for tonight, I always like to start with something positive, is the uh, cleanup on Saturday. Um, we took out six full-size dumpsters mm. and pulled 70 shopping carts out of the woods. Mm. Um, we had participation um, was 
spearheaded by Chris Brickhouse from uh, Better Days Ahead and Sherman Ellis with the Deviators. Uh, several prominent people showed up that I know of were our mayor, Ms. Lindsay, Ms. Vanny. Um, we had our state rep, uh, Joe Cerisi. We had our state senator, Tracy Pennycook. Uh, we had state rep Nelson, who doesn't even serve our area. He's from like the Glenside area. He came down. Um, and they were all working hard and, you know, um, getting their photo ops, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it was a good thing. It was a real positive day. We had a tremendous groundswell of participation from just regular folks who just wanted to help out. Um, as per the 2020 census, the median income here in Pottstown was 57,600 and change. And so we know that 30% of that or less should go to your housing. So that's about a $30, hour, um, $30 an hour job. And so that amounts to about $1,441 would be 30% of that. So you can pretty much get an apartment. It's not easy, but you can, there are apartments for that rental uh, in town. However, if you're working a $15, hour, uh, $15 a day job, sorry, $15 an hour job, which many of the minimum wage jobs went to post pandemic, uh, you're in a much different situation. 30% um, of that, uh, monthly income is $720. So you need to work two full-time $15 an hour jobs to even be in the ballpark to get an apartment or any kind of shelter here in town. We need housing for the people who make this borough run, people who work at Wawa, people who work at Wendy's, um, so that they can live here and spend their money here rather than having to go out of town where they can find cheaper housing in rural areas or you know, live with family outside of town. Um, we know that homelessness is a housing problem. So if we had housing that was more affordable for folks who are currently living in the encampments, maybe they wouldn't even be there. Uh, one thought I have closing tonight is I think that when we have um, a presentation like the Dwight City did last week and this last month and this month, it's a tremendous prog prog um, pro proposition I'm, I'm not against it at all, but I, I, I think that it would not be unreasonable for us to require them to provide two or three apartments in that complex that would be a rent that more people could afford. I think that would be something that would be a minimum impact on their bottom line, and if we have enough people doing that, we're becoming a real um, target for housing. People want to come here and live here and bring their businesses here, as we've heard from many different presentations. So if we establish a procedure along those lines, uh, in Lower Marion, they have that very uh, process in, in play. And the alternative for developers, if they don't want to comply with the uh, option to provide um, affording you know, housing that somebody who's working at Wawa could afford, they give us money. We put it in a fund. We use it to build affordable housing or somehow support affordable housing. And it's working great for them. So I think it's something we should uh, look into. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is uh, Reverend Barron. Good evening, council members, audience. Um, we thought we had this solved when Marsha Bailey spoke. The problem we have with clergy not being able to speak to you is the people we represent live in your borough. Our congregations are made up of people who live in this borough, and they all cannot come out and speak for themselves. So sometimes they ask their pastors to come out and do it. So we thought when Marsha Bailey spoke, it was going to not be a problem. But from what I'm hearing, the people who have spoke, including Tom, who's sitting there right now, has been getting extra phone calls about paychecks. And I'm an associate minister. I don't get paid unless I preach. So, but my church, our church sits on Beach Street. And our members are elderly and don't always come out at night. So when they have an issue, they ask their pastors sometimes to come to council and speak. So we're trying to get some clarity here on what this really means. Because clergy in this town are really upset that they're not maybe going to be allowed to speak. Their churches are here in Pottstown, but because they don't live in Pottstown, they're not considered taxpayers. So we really would like some clarity on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, next up is 
Randy Mims regarding 435 King Street. I'm going to hand out some paperwork here. Some trees. <laughs> These trees. We don't have no trees. We don't have a lot of flowers because it's because May. With all this rain in April, we don't have a lot of flowers. We don't have no trees though. We don't have no trees. Trees gone. Thank you, sir. So, uh, I liked the earlier message from that uh, lady with all the artwork. It was pretty cool. We all worked better together. That was pretty great. Uh, unfortunately, that has not been my experience here with Pottstown Borough whatsoever. So, I got two main problems I want to go over tonight with you guys. First one, let's look uh, out of these exhibits here, or whatever the examples I gave you guys. Uh, let's look at the email from Mr. Keller back in, uh, let's see, July 2nd, 2020. So this is in regard to uh, some requests uh, because I was complaining at the time about all these additional billing and fees and stuff that I was getting hit with. Uh, Mr. Keller <clears throat> specifically stated uh, it, well, originally, Ms. Drobbins, uh, code officer, uh, had emailed below. Uh, so he re references her statement. She, he says, as Ms. Drobbins advised you below, we are able to freeze rental inspection fees and trash fees once we're able to get into the property and conduct our rental property transfer inspection and you apply for a rehab license. So... Uh, Subsequent to this email, I did make sure that I did the transfer ownership inspection. I did. Well, we'll discuss it in, shortly. And subsequently, I also did my rehab license. So <clears throat> were the rental uh, fees and trash fees ever suspended? No, they were not. So I've spent since this time probably somewhere between seven and $10,000 in trash fees alone. Uh, so, let's look at the second uh, paperwork I gave you, the billing. So, uh, after years of paying this and not getting a resolution uh, from this properly, uh, I uh, decided come uh, January I was going to cease paying the, in this particular case, uh, the recent billing is $462.75. Uh, for April's billing, and prior to that, it was about the same. So it's about 1800 1900 maybe 2000 a year. I'm paying in trash service for a, a building that the uh, borough, both the code office and specifically, and Mr. Keller's office, specifically know that this building is vacant and that there are no occupants. Therefore, there can be no possible use of the trash service that's being billed for whatsoever because nobody's there. So <clears throat> that's a big problem to me. I'm tired of uh, unjustly enriching either the borough or the trash uh, people, one or the other. It, this should have been resolved years ago and it was not. So uh, something has to stop with this. It can't go on anymore. If I have to stop it, and it's not a threat, it's just a statement, if I have to stop it by doing a civil suit against the borough and specifically you, Mr. Keller, it's going to happen. You're not going to have immunity based on the fact of your specific negligence of promises made. You can laugh about it. It's not a joke. I don't think this is a joke. I didn't waste an hour coming here and two hours sitting in the meeting and an hour to go back home so that I can watch you laugh about what I'm here to talk about. It's not a joke. Okay? So this is problem number one that we, we, I need to deal with. So, and I've gone in person in January to your office, Mr. Keller. I don't know, was it you, Alexa, that was there at the time? Uh, 
Then I left a specific message, uh, made a special trip in just to talk to That's you. Fine. That's your time, sir. Five, you had five minutes. Well, I'm not done. That's your you got five minutes. You're done. Next. I'm sorry. Okay. Counselor. Um, one thing, April 13th, I wish the girls there were still here who love to garden so much because there was a great opportunity to garden. Oh. There was a great opportunity to garden at Edgewood Cemetery because they're having their cleanup there from 10 in the morning till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I encourage all to come to clean, to help clean up the, or to help plant gardens and make sure that the cemetery, which is an abandoned cemetery, uh, is maintains at least the level of respectability that it's been able to keep so far. I would encourage you to come and pull a weed, plant a garden, do whatever you would like to do to um, help an abandoned cemetery. What's it? April 13th. April Thank you. 13th. Okay. Sam, it's in your packet. Got it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, <laughs> Councillor Tonight. I'm going to be real brief because you know I have to go to bed. But I just wanted to say, I want to say last weekend I took my grandbabies to um, Washington. We was going to go see the cherry blossoms, but it rained, something terrible. And I happened to have my... My umbrella for Paige, and I posted it on Facebook, and everybody's like, where you get that from? I said, you got to ask Patty because you can't have my umbrella. My grandson, he got this umbrella, but it was a really good umbrella. Let me tell you, it's a good umbrella. It's nice and sturdy, and it was, and the winds was terrible. So, um, and it didn't even go the other way when the wind was blowing. So, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for my umbrella. That's it for me. Okay. Councilor Lebedinsky. Yep. Other than Councilor Van. Just two things. Um, I want to thank everybody that came out, especially our elected officials, to do the cleanup. And I thank very much um, Commissioner DeBello for meeting with us and having a good conversation about our homeless population. That's all. Councilor Proxel. Well, I say this every year, but this be like the be thirteenth year that I celebrated uh, my first date with my wife when we went to Juan Carlos. So oh. it's, uh, I'm glad you know Ron's still here and I'm still married. So, <laughs> so it worked. Yeah. It worked. <laughs> Mayor Henry. Um, yes, I forgot to mention. So it is on. It is in your packet. May fifteenth, um, from five thirty to eight, is the um, Post Town Rotary Big Ticket Night, and if I have tickets to sell. Um, they are $120, $80 is tax deductible, and the proceeds all go to Strive. It is a dinner, drinks, and like a chance to win. I think it's, um, I think there's $8,300 in prizes. Um, it's basically like bingo. They pick your number, and if they pick your number, you're out. And if you last till the end, you get to win $5,000. I've made it to like the fourth place, and I didn't make it all the way. But... Um, it's a great night, and it benefits Strive. Um, so if anyone's interested, I have tickets available. Um, contact me after. Mm. I can't top that. Me being adjourned. This conference is no longer being recorded.